I'm Lance Earl uh, with the Word Ministries. I'm standing here in front of the Ogden Temple in Ogden, Utah. And I want to share a few things with you today that I believe are critically important. First of all, I, I will start off by reminding you of the story of Peter and John in Acts 3 through 5. It started for them when they were hauled before the authorities, before the magistrate, before the Sanhedrin, and they were given a gag order that they could never speak of Christ again. And Peter, being my hero, said, uh, nah, <laughs> something like that. And he continued doing what he did. The story just got worse and worse. Uh, they were dragged before the magistrate again. They were put in prison. The, the gag order was reaffirmed and finally, they were, they were beaten brutally. And again, the gag order reaffirmed that you will never speak of Jesus. I love this story because it's my story. And I want to share briefly what happened with me. And then I want to share the cool thing that happened with me because it's amazing. So in 2015, I was writing a freedom slash a faith column for the Idaho State Journal in Pocatello when I was called before my bishop and told that I could never speak again of my faith publicly on penalty of losing my temple recommend. I answered, as did Peter and John. A month later, my recommend was taken away. A short time after that, I, um, I was called before an excommunication hearing. And just as the Sanhedrin always did to the early saints, there was false allegations. While I bore a peaceful, quiet, loving uh, testimony of Jesus Christ, my stake president, my stake president, made a 911 call. He made a false police report. He said that I was causing a disturbance. I received a follow-up letter that said I represented an actual danger to all Mormons. And so... I kind of blew that off, and then I took my wife to the funeral of her best friend. And we were met outside the, the church building. We never got in, and we were asked to leave, and we did that peacefully. Now, for those of you who don't know me, you're, you may be thinking, no, 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 that just doesn't make sense. Well, I have the audio on my website. It confirms everything. But with more false allegations over the funeral deal, I was hauled into criminal court, and I spent a big part of this year trying to not go to jail for six months and trying to not pay a $1,000 fine, and that was just settled. We received the final paperwork two days ago. Charges dismissed, no evidence of any wrongdoing. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So that's not what I wanted to share with you, though. I just wanted you to have some background. You see... In this temple, right now, as we speak, my younger brother is being married. Now, there are those that are up in the ceiling room who are worthy, and they get to be there. And there are those that are not worthy. That's the, the crud and the Gentiles and the non-believers in our family. But even they, even they get to sit in a warm waiting room in comfortable chairs. But my wife and I, we are told that we must stay right here or we will be arrested again. This has been really painful to me because the last part of this is yet to be played out. My mother is aged. We don't know how much time she has left, but the lead attorney for the church has told me that if I attend the funeral of my own mother, if I attend the funeral of my own mother, I will be arrested and prosecuted again. And so why am I here? Not to complain, not to tell you that they're evil, that my, I am here because my question is this. If this is the church of Jesus Christ, where is Jesus? That is my question. Where is Jesus? And I have the answer for that. The answer is, I found Jesus in my Bible. When all of this was going down and things got, got very, very confusing, my wife and I bowed before God. We laid everything at the foot of the cross. We said, God, show us, and we don't care what the cost is. And he opened his word to us. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. That's where Jesus is found, is in the Bible. But I want to share a couple other places where Jesus is found. 
we were moved to immediately go into ministry. We are in the prison ministry, and we serve weekly, uh, actually a little more than weekly, at the women's prison in Pocatello. I had never found God in the big house here. But in the federal big house that sits on the hill above Pocatello, I found God. There are two women that are in our Bible study groups that the Mormon church says can never be forgiven. Both of them are guilty of horrible, brutal murders. And yet the church says they can't be forgiven, but God hanging on the cross being murdered himself cried out, Father, forgive them if you can murder God and be forgiven. Who can't you murder and be forgiven? And so uh, these two women, one is, is amazing. She is our worship leader on Sunday mornings. She brings her acoustic guitar into a big assembly hall and her voice rings out clear and strong as she praises God and helps other women. Her smile never dies because she has Jesus in her life. The other one, her murder was even worse. She is one of five, five women in the whole prison system there who has a special ministry, and when one of her sisters in the prison is depressed, is suicidal, is falling into the depths of, of hopelessness, she is one of five who is called to go to her and bring her Jesus Christ. That is where God is. You see, God isn't in the big house, but he is in the federal big house, and amid the clanging of metal doors and the profanity of some of the world's most evil people, God walks the halls. God fills these women one at a time with light and with power and with the ability to hope again. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Where else do we find Jesus? My wife and I went down to the Manti pageant and we witnessed to many people this last summer. And we met several. There are two young people that I met, and they are amazing. They have been set free. They have come to Jesus, and I just received their wedding announcement. So I am so thrilled that they will be married knowing who Christ is. I'm so thrilled that they will raise their children up to know God. That's where Jesus is. And so I want to tell all of you who are listening that Jesus is available. He can be found. And I want especially those who are in Mormonism to know that if you are struggling, if you are hurting, if you don't know where Jesus is, if you can't find Jesus in your religion, I can help you. We are The Word Ministries. We are at www.theword.one. And we would love to help you and point you to good, Bible-believing, wonderful Christian churches close to you.